This is a presentation on work rights for temp workers and specifically the new Temp Workers Bill of Rights. As a reminder, this presentation gives general information, not legal opinion. The New Jersey Register and New Jersey Administrative Code are the official sources for regulatory information published by the Department of Labor, but we like to think these slides are pretty accurate. Uh, these slides are drafted with the assistance of generative AI and thoroughly reviewed by people. There might be varying levels of famili familiarity with the temp worker industry, so we want to start off with some key definitions. The law has the official legal definitions. These are simplified for the purposes of uh, outreach. So a temporary worker is someone who is employed by a temporary health service firm for a specific type of work. The law refers to them as temporary laborers, but we'll call them temporary workers or temp workers. Temp agencies hire people to help other companies with temporary extra or special tasks. They pay their employees wages. They're responsible for employee actions while they are working for their third party clients. The law refers to them as temporary health service firms, but we'll probably call them temporary agencies or temp agencies. Temp agencies assign temporary workers to third party clients. These are also known as client companies, and this is where a temporary worker performs their job. Before we go into the details about the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights and other work rights, we think it would be helpful to give an overview of the temp industry. This data can give us a sense of some of the trends of who make up the temp industry. The data discussing we'll be discussing today comes from the U.S. Census Bureau's 2022 American Community Survey. This data was prepared by the New Jersey Department of Labor's Office of Research and Information. So on the left, you can see we have a breakdown of the number and percentage of temp workers across counties in New Jersey. Uh, the highest per, uh, portions live in Middlesex and Passaic County. Based on the uh, American Community Survey, there are 10,948 temp workers total in New Jersey, though there is possibility for undercounting. You can see that the vast majority of temp workers speak a language other than English in their home. You can also see the uh, race and ethnic breakdown and gender breakdown of temp workers in New Jersey. You, most temp workers are Hispanic and are identified as women. Most workers report less than $25,000 in take home earnings. Uh, very few make above $50,000. Many temp workers live in single female led households. Okay, so now we'll get into the Temporary Workers Bill of Rights. All temporary workers are protected under wage and hour law, but some types of temporary workers, which are defined by statute, are covered under the Temporary Workers Bill of Rights. The Temp Workers Bill of Rights went fully into effect in August of 2023. It establishes requirements that the temp agency and third party client must follow. It addresses things like assignment rules and notifications, record keeping, fees, payment, transportation, and retaliation. Like I said, certain types of temporary workers are covered under the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights. Um, it distinguishes certain types of temporary workers' jobs that are covered. They're based on code from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. We don't expect anyone to memorize these codes, but they're important to be aware of because it's how our wage and hour investigators determine if a certain worker is covered under the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights. Some of the most common jobs covered by the law are warehouse workers, moving and maintenance jobs, and construction, but there are many more types of jobs covered. I'll read the rest of these slides. Um, jobs covered are food preparation and serving, production, such as laundry and dry cleaning, food processing, textile and woodworkers, construction, transportation and moving, such as drivers, parking attendants, and material moving, personal care and service, such as amusement, entertainment, and dressing room attendants, building and grounds cleaning and maintenance, such as janitors, cleaners, and landscaping workers, 
protective service, such as security guards and crossing guards, installation, maintenance, and repair. This is true of all wage and hour laws and is also true of temp the temporary worker bill of rights. Immigrants are covered under this law. The department does not ask about immigration or citizenship status, and we serve all workers regardless of immigration status. We will not share any information, including with immigration agencies, unless required to by law or regulations. And depending on an immigrant worker situation, the department might be able to assist with immigration relief, such as deferred action. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So now we'll go into the details of the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights and what it now requires. Temp agencies are required to share some notifications with you in a language that you understand. The department has posted some example forms in multiple languages on our website. And we recommend that you keep copies of any forms you receive because they have important information. And sometimes temp agencies uh, do not follow the law. So it's important to have records. An example of a required form is the assignment notification statement. The temp agency must provide this to you when you are sent to work. This form includes work details, pay, and work rights. You can see examples of the form below. If your assignment changes, you have certain rights. If there's no work at a scheduled assignment, you should receive a minimum of four hours of pay at the agreed upon hourly rate. If the work site changes from the original schedule during the same shift, receive a minimum of two hours of pay at the original rate of pay, plus any work hours worked at the new location. For multi-day assignments, you should get 48 hours notice of schedule, shift, or location changes when possible. If there is no work available to you, you can ask for a signed written confirmation from the temp agency that you saw work that day. The confirmation should include the name of the temp agency, your name and address, and the date and time you received the confirmation. Under the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights, temp agencies and third-party clients or client companies must follow rules when transporting you to and from the work site. The agency cannot require you to use transportation that they provide. They can't charge you for transportation they provide you to and from the work site. If the temp agency provides you with transportation, it cannot allow a vehicle to transport you if they know or should know that the vehicle is unsafe, if the vehicle is not insured, if the driver of the vehicle does not hold a valid license to operate the vehicle, or if the vehicle doesn't have a safety belt or seat belt for each passenger. You can purchase equipment, clothing, and other items from the temp agency, but the temp agency must provide it at cost. This means the temp agency cannot make a profit from selling these things to you. The same goes for meals. Temp agencies cannot charge you for meals that you don't eat, and you decide if you wanna purchase the meal. If a temp agency provides a meal to you, they must provide it at cost. Again, they cannot make a profit from selling meals to you. Temp workers' rate of pay and the cost of their benefits must be at least the same as the average rate of pay and average cost of benefits of any of the employees of the third-party client you're working for if they're doing the same or substantially similar work under similar working conditions. So, what basically this means is a temp worker can't make less than the average person working for the um, employed at the third party client company for same or similar work. What is considered similar work? It means that the job requires the same skill, effort, and responsibility. Skill is measured by factors like experience, ability, education, and training that a person might need to perform the job. The effort or the amount of mental or physical exertion someone needs to perform the job. Responsibility, the amount of accountability and discretion that are required to perform a job. And working condition means the physical surroundings and hazards. This does not mean, um, this does not include job shifts. 
You can request the temp agency to pay you every other week instead of daily. The temp agency must provide you written notification of this right. And you can request payment in check, cash, or direct deposit. The temp agency must provide you the following information to you using the DOL form, or they can include this information to you in your pay stub. This information is the name and address of third-party clients, the number of hours worked for each third-party client, the rate of pay, including overtime, total earnings, any deductions, the maximum fee a temp agency can charge a third-party client to hire a temp worker directly, the total amount the temp agency charged the third-party client for your services in that pay period, and the total cost of benefits the temp agency provided to the temp worker in that pay period. There are certain fees that a temp agency cannot charge you. They cannot charge you for transportation, check cashing, consumer reports, criminal background checks, or drug tests. You can accept a permanent position with a third-party client or the client company. The temp agency can charge a placement fee to the third-party client, but they cannot charge a fee to you. Temp agencies must tell you in writing about a strike, lockout, or other labor dispute at a workplace they assign you to. You can refuse to work at those workplaces. Temp agencies must be certified by the Director of the New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs within the Department of Law and Public Safety in order to make designated classification placements, in order to make the placements that are covered under the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights. The Department of Labor does not enforce these provisions. They are enforced by DCA, the Division of Consumer Affairs. A temp agency must keep records relating to the assignment of temporary workers in those designated classification placements that cover temporary workers under the law for six years. This is the single day work verification form. A third party client must complete this work verification form and provide it to you when you work a single day. They must provide it to you at the end of the work day. If your employer does not follow the law, you can file a complaint with NJDOL. Keep track of the hours you worked, the pay and the contact information of the temp agency and third party client. You can file a complaint online um, in English or Spanish or by mail or fax. In the section titled complaint reason details on the complaint form, check other and then enter any information you have about the violation of the temporary worker bill of rights. A trusted person, including a representative from a union or community-based organization, can help you file a complaint or email us on your behalf. If you want more details about the complaint process, you can contact us. We'll make every effort to provide assistance in your language. We will also make every effort to protect your identity when you file a complaint. Some tips when filing is to answer accurately as possible and to submit copies of any documentation, not originals. Groups of employees must file separate complaints. Later in the process, we might ask you to provide additional details like employer information, hours worked, et cetera. If you file online, you will receive a confirmation number of where your complaint is in the, in the process. You can find more in information on the investigative process on our website. You can also check our website with your confirmation number to get a status. Note that your employer may be contacted through the investigation process, and then at the end, you'll get notified of your results. Paper complaints don't get confirmation numbers, so if you have need information about that, you can call this number below or email us, and we'll make every effort to provide assistance to you in your language. As I mentioned, your employer may be contacted throughout the investigation process. In some situations, we might ask for your written permission to share your identity or information you've provided with your employer. This is not always necessary, but can be sometimes. If you decline, we will not, not disclose your information. We won't ever inform your employer you, you 
specifically complained, except in very limited circumstances. During an investigation, the department will not reveal the worker's identity without permission, share a worker's name, uh, or other personally identifiable information, disclose the reason an investigation has been opened with the employer, so we won't disclose that your complaint initiated an investigation, and we won't share personal information with immigration authorities unless legally required to do so. The main point here is DOL will make every effort to protect your confidentiality. Um, there are very limited re reasons why an employer would find out you are the one who complained, although um, different situations might happen. Yes, we're reminding you now that we will keep your confidentiality as much as we can, but you still can file an anonymous complaint. To do so, you would have to file by mail or fax and write anonymous in the name section of the complaint form. If you file anonymously, you won't receive information about your complaint or be able to check its status because we won't have the ability to connect it to you. Under the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights, you can file a complaint with the Department of Labor and or bring a civil action in the Superior Court in the county where the violation happened or in the county where you live. You could bring an action within six years of the final date of your employment or within six years from the date the contract between the temp agency and the third party client ended. You can pursue a complaint with the Department of Labor at the same time as your civil action suit. You might get remedies under both. Only the Superior Court can order monetary damages or equitable relief to impacted workers. This includes reinstatement when a temp agency retaliates against a worker. Any penalties the employer pays for a DOL investigation are paid to the department. So the only way to receive monetary damages is through a Superior Court civil action suit. The temp agency or third party client you're working for can't punish you for filing a complaint or participating in an investigation. Complaining about a violation of the law to a temp agency, third party client, or coworker, community organization, they can't retaliate against you for filing a complaint with a state or federal agency or with the superior court or testifying or preparing to testify in an investigation. Punishment might look like firing, disciplinary action, cutting pay or hours, or other adverse actions. And employers who break this law may face penalties. If you feel you're being retaliated against, file a complaint right away. For the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights, if the temp agency fires you or takes disciplinary action against you within 90 days of you exercising your rights under the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights, there's what's called a rebuttable presumption that the firing or disciplinary action was retaliation. What this means is that if a negative action comes against you in 90 days after you exercise your rights, your it's your employer's responsibility to prove that that action was not retaliation. Depending on an immigrant worker situation, the department may be able to offer a statement of interest for workers who can report work rights violations. The department can issue statements of interest to DHS in support of a deferred action application. Another type of immigration relief is UT visa certifications. DOL can issue a certification in support of a UT visa application. These visas are for victims of certain crimes and human trafficking. So the Department of Labor doesn't grant immigration relief, but it can provide supporting documentation in a worker's um, process of getting immigration relief. Learn more at our website on immigration. We uh, this is a very serious matter and can be a helpful tool, but any worker interested in this should speak with an immigration attorney before pro uh, proceeding. The Department of Labor cannot provide legal advice. Temp workers are covered by more than just the rights under the Temporary Worker Bill of Rights. They're covered by things like minimum wage, overtime law, paid leave, um, et cetera. You can find a resource about these rights on myworkrights.nj.gov. Now we're going to talk about how temp workers might intersect with other um, laws that you're doing outreach on for the CARE grant. So, for example, as New Jersey earns sick leave, temp agencies must provide all its employees, including temp workers, with up to 40 hours of earned sick leave per year to care for themselves or a loved one. If you use your sick time as a temp agency, as the temp worker, your employer pays you. The temp agency will pay you, not the client company. 
The temp agency can't make you find coverage for your shift if you use time under the earned sick leave law. The website mysickdays.nj.gov has more information. Temp workers could also be eligible for paid family and medical leave, also known as temporary disability and family leave insurance. Your employer, the temp agency, must set up these payroll contributions for you. So learn more and apply at myleavebenefits.nj.gov. Similarly, it is the temp agency who must set up unemployment payroll contributions for you. Temp workers could be eligible for unemployment benefits if they lose work and are not offered similar replacement work. Our myunemployment.nj.gov website has more information. The next few slides are not for external outreach. These are for your awareness as a care grantee. These are some of our outreach materials we have that can support your outreach on the Temp Worker Bill of Rights. This temp worker handout is in multiple languages, as well as how to file a wage and hour complaint. Our Know Your Work Rights mini brochure is another helpful resource that temp workers can use to understand their rights. They have rights just like any other type of workers under these laws. This is some background on investigations. Again, these are internal slides for your own training. This is not for external outreach. Keep in mind that the department receives thousands of wage and hour complaints each year, and not all complaints can be handled the same way. Investigations can take weeks or months. The Department of Labor has the ability to issue stop work orders on a job site when there is strong evidence that workers are being exploited. The Department of Labor is implementing a strategic enforcement approach to target high violation industries with low rates of complaints. Our current campaigns are in drywall construction and laundromats. We have more information on the investigation process at our investigate link below. These are ways that you can support a worker under the CARE grant. You can get to know the temp workers website, help repair workers to talk to their employers about their rights or speak to the employer on their behalf. You can provide handouts to workers that they can pass on to their coworkers or to the employer. All of our handouts are on our CARE grant website. You could help a worker file a complaint and submit strong evidence, share information with them on confidentiality. You can, can, can encourage workers to provide their contact information on the complaint form um, because complaints just work better when we have contact information and can follow up as opposed to when they're submitted anonymously. You can host in-person interviews with workers to aid DOL investigations. You can explain protections for immigrants and our immigrants relief options. As noted, grantees can't utilize funds to file a complaint with the department on behalf of the worker, represent a worker in wage collection proceedings, or in any related DOL enforcement activities. Um, you would have to identify other funds to do that work because it could create a conflict of interest in the um, enforcement process. You can also support employers or temp agencies and the client companies or third-party clients under the CARE grant. You can do this by getting to know the employer responsibilities. We have a website, myworkrates.nj.gov slash employers that covers this. You can help them understand the laws, provide them with mandatory forms and posters in their employees' languages for the temp workers. And you can also ensure that they certify with the Division of Consumer Affairs if they're making job placements covered under the law. Uh, this is the end of the presentation, and if you have any questions, you are welcome to reach out to any CARE Grant staff, and we'll be happy to assist you.